Welcome to the Andrew Lavery Show, where we analyze companies that are publicly traded on the stock market. This channel is geared toward the beginning investor to teach them how to evaluate a company so they can decide for themselves if a company is a good investment or not. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll let you know if today's company, which is Duke Energy Corporation, I'll let you know if I think they're a good investment based on the information that we're going to see here in this video. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Don't forget the notification bell. I post new videos every Monday and Fridays. Also, if there's a particular company you'd like me to do a video on, down below in the description, there is a video request form. Fill that form out, and I'll try to get a video on your company made as soon as possible. Okay, so let's get in. Let's get down with the actual analysis itself. First thing I like to look for in any company that I'm considering and making an investment in is does that company pay a dividend? Dividends are very important to me. I like the cash. I like the money in my pocket. Um, real quick, if you don't know what a dividend is, is the company has um, take some of the profit that they have and they pay it to you. They give some of they give some of that profit to you as the shareholder because as a shareholder you are a part owner of the company. So they're just simply taking some of the profits that they the company has made and giving it to you as the owner. And the more shares you own, the more you get in dividends. So that's a nutshell. That's what a dividend is. So you can see here we're on the summary page on Yahoo Finance for Duke Energy. And you just look at the four dividend and yield, and you can see here, yes, Duke Energy does pay a dividend. In fact, it's three dollars and eighty-six cents per year per share, which happens to be four point three seven percent of the current share price. So great, they pay a dividend. That's awesome. But I do like to do a little deeper dive into the dividend. I want to know a little more history on it. So what I'll do is I'll come to dividend.com, and we're already on Duke Energy's page, and scroll down just a little bit. I like to look for consecutive years of dividend increase. So it's great they're paying a dividend, but I want to make sure a company is increasing its dividend at least once a year. And I want to know how many years in a row have they done that. I like to see at least 10 years in a row that they've been increasing their dividends. And you can see here Duke Energy has been doing it for 14 years. So that's fantastic. They're going above and beyond and for my standards anyways. Next, I like to look for is it's great they're increasing the dividend, but by how much? I like to see at least a 3% increase every year would be nice. Um, more is always better. But if you scroll down, and we got Duke dividend growth. You got one year annualized growth all the way up to 20 year. And you can see here the you know, one year growth, we only had 2%. So it's under my 3% that I like to see. But look at these other percentages here. These aren't very high. Especially here, you got a negative percentage for a 20 year annualized growth. That's definitely not a good thing. It's kind of a red flag for me. So um, definitely not definitely not the greatest. Uh, FYI, too, on a side note, if you happen to see a 0% in any one of these, that just simply means that the company doesn't have enough dividend history to populate a percentage here. So say, for example, Duke had only been paying a dividend for the past 15 years. You would see a zero right here because they don't have 20 years of, of dividend history. So if you see any zeros, it's not a big deal, so don't worry about it. Um, all right, so now we've seen what their increases have looked like on a percentage, you know, percentage-wise. I do like to see if their dividend increases are outpacing inflation or at least keeping pace with inflation. It's important for me because right now I'm using my dividends to reinvest back into my portfolio to grow my portfolio even faster. However, when I'm older and I retire, I want to take that dividend money and actually use it to live off of and pay bills and just you know live a nice life in retirement. Um, so I want to make sure my dividend increases are at least keeping pace with inflation. So that way, that way, my purchasing power when I retire is not eaten away over the years by inflation. So what I'll do, I like to see the um, the dollar increases here. Um, I'll come to payout history, do payout history. And let's come down, click view all payout history. Scroll to the bottom as far back as dividend.com will show you. And we got the first, we got the, a full year here, 1996. <clears throat> you can see they paid six dollars and twenty-five cents, we'll call it, and for the full year per share. So what I'll do is I'll take that info and go to U.S. Inflation Calculator and come over, input the start year, which is '96, put in six point two five, and hit calculate. Now to keep pace with inflation, divot or excuse me. Um, Duke Energy should be paying $10.42 per year per share. And if you remember, over here on Yahoo Finance, 
they're only paying $3.86 per year, per share. I mean, even in 1996, they were paying $6.25. So without even adjusting for inflation, they're, they're doing a horrible job with increasing their dividends. So um, never mind when you account for inflation. But either way you look at it, they're not keeping pace with inflation. That's, that's a big red flag for me. I do not like to see that. So that's the final thing I'll look at with regards to dividend history. Next, what I'll do is I'll come back to Yahoo Finance, click the statistics tab, scroll down. I want to make sure a company is profitable before I invest in them. Profitable meaning they spend less money to run the business and grow the business than they bring in in revenue, which is no, revenues is another word for all the money they make in sales and everything that they're uh, that they're doing. So I like to look at profitability, look at profit margin, operating margin. These percentages right here, you always want them to be positive. Now this profit margin, what well, this is telling me right here, 5.77%. That means for every $100 Duke Energy took in in revenue, they had $5.77 left over after paying all their bills and growing the business. So um, the percentage, it, while it's not negative, so that's good, it is kind of on the low side. So um, that may be normal, honestly, because some, some companies just by their very nature have low profit margins. It's just the way they are. So this could be a, a normal profit profit margin for them. Um, I always higher is always better, um, but this could be normal. So um, you could do a little research to find out if uh, Duke Energy, um, you know, being in the energy industry utility sector, does it have? Um, do they naturally have lower profit margins? So you can do a little research on that just to find out if this five point seven seven percent is actually is it normal or is it a little bit on the low side? So. Um, but at least it's positive. So that's that's a good thing. That's what I like to see. Both these percentages positive. Next, I like to look at management effectiveness and look at return on assets and return on equity. I want to make sure the management is doing a good job. And these percentages right here, you also want them to always be positive. Negative percentages here are a big red flag for me. And even looking at this return on equity, 2.21%, to me, that seems a little on the low side. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one quite that low before. Um, so there'll be another spot later on in the video where we're going to look at uh, something else with regards to management effectiveness that could give us a little insight into if this 2.21% is low or is it you know, normal. Um, but at least the percentages are positive, so that's a good thing. Scrolling down, next thing I look at is income statement section. And I like to look at the quarterly revenue growth. Y over Y means year over year. So meaning they're taking fourth quarter 2020 numbers because that's what these are right here. Fourth quarter 2020 revenue and look and compare it to fourth quarter 2019 revenue and just, just comparing just those two quarters. So what this is telling me is that the fourth quarter 2020 revenue was 5.3% less than the fourth quarter 2019 revenue. Not a good thing. I always like to see a positive percentage here because I want them to grow the business. It, First step to growing a business is increasing your revenue, increasing that top line, all the money that you have coming into the business. So that lets me know that the business actually, you know, with regards to revenue, went down a little bit uh, or has come down a little bit. So not a good thing. Now, this could be due to COVID-19 with all the economies and the, everything being shut down in 2020. So that could be the reason why this number is negative. I would do a little research into it just to find out if that was the reason or if there's some other reason why they lost a little bit of revenue, um, you know, just comparing those two quarters. So, but overall, you definitely always like to see a positive percentage here, um, uh, higher than better, but at least positive. Next quarterly earnings growth again, year over year, it says not applicable. I'm not really sure why, because I think it's very applicable. Um, earnings is another name for profit. So they're, you know, again, they're comparing fourth quarter 2020 to fourth quarter 2019. And there should be a percentage here. And just like above with quarterly revenue growth, you would like to see a positive percentage here, even if it's a small positive, say like a two or three percent. Definitely want to see positive. I'm not sure why it's saying not applicable. I, I, I don't like it when the, when Yahoo Finance does that. Next, the other thing I like to look for is the total debt. <clears throat> How much debt does a company have? It's very important. Too much debt is never a good thing. And you can see here, they have $64.8 billion in debt, $64.08 billion in debt. Now that's a huge number, but you got to keep in mind, 
uh, Duke Energy is a large company, so the larger the company is, the more debt they can take on and still be okay and still manage it um, with, you know, little to, you know, very little risk at least. You know, that's the best you can do. Um, but to find out if this number is too high, is big for Duke Energy or not, you can look at the debt to equity ratio. And this 130.28, that's actually a very good debt to equity ratio. I prefer anything under 100, but... I have invested in companies that are in the 200s and companies that are in the 300s. Once I hit the 400s, that starts to raise the red flag for me and I start to shy away from the company. But the higher this number is, that tells you, that will tell you that the, the bet is, is uh, you know, getting to be a lot for the company to manage. So the fact that this is almost out of 100, you know, just, you know, just over 130, lets me know this $64.08 billion is really not that much for um, Duke Energy to, to handle and to manage. So um, very good debt to equity ratio. I do like to see that. Next thing I like to look for, scrolling up to the top, come to financials. And by default, we land on the income statement. And we are looking at annual numbers. You can flip over to quarterly if you want. And keep in mind, all these numbers are in thousands, meaning you just take whatever number you're seeing, add three zeros to the right. And that's what that's the true number. So scroll down. I'm actually going to scroll all the way to the bottom because I want to be able to see this last row to the right. Um, Yahoo Finance will give you four or sometimes three years of financial information. You can get more if you get a, a paid membership with Yahoo Finance. I don't have one. If you want one, by all means, go right ahead. So, but we're looking at four years of uh, financial information. I like to look at the total revenue. And what I want here is revenue to grow every single year, even if it's a small increases. Um, at least it's growing. I want to see I want to see some growth. And you can see here in 2017, 2018, 2019, there was growth every single year. So that's great. 2020 actually saw a little bit of a decrease. Um, it could be due to due to COVID-19. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not sure how COVID-19 would have, have affected Duke Energy, but it very well could have. So that could be the reason why you're seeing a decrease. Sometimes I do see a decrease from one year to next, and then the very next year you see it increase again, and then increase again the following year after that. So sometimes you do see some some decreases, and it does happen from time to time. Um, I know Coca-Cola, I invested in them, and they had two years in a row of revenue decline, and that was simply because they were re doing a lot of restructuring within the company. They were changing things around a lot, trying to make the company more lean and more efficient, and that was the cause of the revenue decrease. So on the surface, it looked bad, but there was actually a very good reason as to why it was happening. So, um, so you never know. Um, ideally, you want the revenue to grow, but if you do see a little bit of a hiccup like we're seeing here from 2019 to 2020, don't be too concerned with it, but I would do a little research to, as to figure out why the revenue did go down. Next, I like to look for is come over to, oops, let me scroll up a little bit, make it easier. Come to cash flow. And again, we're on annual numbers. Again, numbers are in thousands. Keep that in mind. And I'm going to hit, hit hit expand all. That just gives us more rows down here. Some of them were hidden to start. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. <clears throat> Alrighty, almost there. There we go. And the number I'm looking for here is a free cash flow. And I want to see, just like with revenue, I want to see the free cash flow increase every single year. Um, even if it's small increases, uh, bigger the better, but at least increasing. And that reason why I like this number so much is because this is where your dividend money comes from. This is a pile of money where your dividends come from. So if a company is increasing their free cash flow every year, the likelihood of them increasing their dividend every year is very, very high. Not a guarantee, but very high. So and we're seeing here, we got negative numbers. I mean, this is negative by a lot. And, you know, we got farther into the negative it went down again in 2019 big rebound to almost 8.9 billion dollars uh, in 2020 so that's great they flipped the positive and got it well into the positive so that that's a good thing um but i'm not sure you know seeing these negatives that's a big red flag for me um you can see here too that the common stock dividend paid uh these numbers will always be negative because this is money leaving the company so don't worry about these numbers being negative but you can see here they paid out $2.45 billion, but their free cash flow is negative about $1.4 billion. So it makes me wonder where they got this money from because they didn't get it from free cash flow. They didn't have any free cash flow. Um, it could have come from any number of places, I suppose, but um, it's just a, this is a red flag for me. I don't, I don't like to see these, these numbers like this. Um, 
And one other thing that I would do here before, and I'm not sure why we're not seeing a number here for for common stock dividend paid, but I would take the latest year available. In this case, it's 2020's numbers. I would take the number that you would see here, divide it by the free cash flow, and get a payout ratio. And I'd like to see what percentage of the free cash flow the company is paying out in dividends. You can kind of eyeball it just by looking at the numbers, but I do like to see the actual percentage. So just, you know, divide, like I said, divide this number, take this number, divide it by whatever the free cash flow is and get your payout ratio. I like to see uh, payout ratio is definitely under 50%, preferably. Um, and the reason why is because if the free cash flow decreases from one year to the next, there's a little bit of a buffer available where the company still has some room to increase the free to increase the dividend, even though the free cash flow went down. Now, some companies, by their very nature, uh, real estate investment trusts are one company that I'm, I can think of that have uh, pretty high payout ratios, and they they really always will. They would be surprised to see one in the seventy or eighty percent range. Um, but companies that are not real estate investment trusts, I would like to see lower payout ratios, under fifty percent, preferably. So that's the final thing here that we'll look for. <clears throat> Next, I'll come to E-Trade. Now, E-Trade is my broker. That's who I use. You can use anybody you want. I'm not sure if any other broker will have this same information I'm about to show you. But as you can see, I'm not even logged on. So you could come to E-Trade and just look this information up if your broker doesn't have it. So what I do is I come to the Fundamentals page for Duke. And there's three areas here I like to look at. One is financial strength. And I like to look at these little paragraphs. It says Duke's debt to equity ratio indicates that it has been more aggressive with using debt to finance its growth than 64% of its peers. So um, more aggressive than using debt. I mean, it's not a not a big red flag. I'm not really too worried about it, given that their debt to equity ratio was about 130. So that's pretty low. Um, that may be kind of high for the utility industry, perhaps. But overall, I'm not too worried about it at all. Uh, next, I come down I look at the profitability section. And it says here, Duke's gross margin is more than 80% of other companies in the same industry, which means it has more cash to spend on business operations as compared to its peers. More cash to spend, never a bad thing. I love it well above average on that. So that's a good thing. As indicated by the operating margin, Duke controls its costs and expenses as well as its peers. So about on average with regards to controlling its costs, I prefer above average. Um, obviously, it's never a bad thing, but at least they're... They're doing okay. They seem to be doing okay with regards to controlling their costs and, and keeping the business lean and efficient. Next, I like to look for is the management effectiveness. And this is that area I told you I said there'll be later on in the video where I said we'll see if that 2.21% debt to return on equity, excuse me, was a, um, a good percentage or not. This is where we'll, we'll find out if it'll give, us, it'll give us a little more insight. And it says here the return on equity for Duke shows that it is able to reinvest its earnings less efficiently than 77% of its competitors in the same industry. So less efficiently than well over half of the competitors. That tells me that 2.21% that we saw on return on equity on Yahoo Finance is not good at all. Um, we're seeing almost the same percentage here, 2.78%. So that lets me know that the management at Duke Energy, they're not the greatest. Uh, they definitely have some, some things they need to work out and some things they need to improve on. Not sure exactly what, but there's some things they need to improve on. So that's the final thing that I would look at overall. Um, I would recommend that you just do a quick read on a company just to find out what they're about. You know, Duke Energy, you can say, all right, they're, they're a utility. They provide electricity. But there may be some other things that they do that you're not aware of, and you never know. So uh, just do a quick read. Company website is a good place to look for that. You might, you might be surprised on what else the company is invested in and what other business areas it may be in. Uh, as you may never have known of before. So um, based on everything that we have seen, would I invest in Duke Energy? The answer is no. Their return on equity is terrible. That lets me know their management is not doing well. Their dividend is nowhere near keeping pace with inflation. Um, that is a big thing for me. If that happens, I'd, I will not invest in a company at all. So that, I mean, that alone, if that was the only bad thing we saw, I would not invest in Duke if that was the only thing, bad thing we saw. But we're seeing other bad things. Um, like I said, the management is not great. So I, w I would stay away from Duke Energy. Um, if you really like it, if I if I, I maybe will keep it on my radar to see if they improved in the future. But as of right now, my answer is no, I would not invest in them. 
So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget hit the don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. Thanks.